Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to go over some finishing details on the 1943 MD Sony PVM that I just got done doing a couple of videos on and uh, that monitor has been fully restored and it is finished and it's actually listed now for sale. I started an eBay auction for it, so I'll show you that listing and I'll go through a little bit of the details in a minute or two. But before I get into that, I just wanted to go through, I found a couple of, uh, or just one major document for the manual, or that's the service manual for this monitor and uh, this other little technical mo manual right here. But uh, it's not actually for the 43, that's not listed on here, it's a 44 and a 42Q. However, this is the closest to the 43MD manual that I was able to find or even specific details on it. A lot of the things are exactly the same between those monitors and then some of the details are different. However, the internal makeup of them is the same. So if you happen to have one of these two monitors or maybe even a 20, uh, 44 or 2042, then you're gonna have the same kind of, uh, you know, monitor as what I'll be talking about here. So if I go through a couple of pages on here, I wanted to show some Im more important information. I'm going to zoom in, and uh, it's going to be right here, which is super fine pitch Trinitron picture tube. So this one does have a 600 TV line resolution monitor. That's pretty standard for this medical grade monitor and every other PVM except for the higher end M4s and the L5 series, all the other ones pretty much have 600 or less TV lines. Now something else that's interesting, it says here directly under that, is that there's an RGB input. Yes, there's RGB on all three of these monitors, but apparently for the 44Q, you do get component. So you may get, I have not seen one of these, the 44Qs, so you may have actually component switchable or a different component connector on um, re the rear. It says it's got a selection. So it looks like it's a selectable one. And then on the 42Q as well as the 43MD, like the one I had been working on, there is no component support. So that's one of the major things on there. There's also no uh, support for audio on that RGB line. So uh, someone was asking if, if you could do something else. Well, you can obviously feed your audio directly from either your SCART adapter or your uh, SCART switch or whatever you're using. You can feed that audio, even if you're using BNC into a uh, Extron or some kind of other device, you can feed your audio outside of that into a stereo system and just use something different. Besides the mono speaker on these, isn't that great to begin with? Uh, but that's pretty much the most important part. You know, it does do PAL and CCAM and NTSC, and it does have um, external sync. It has a couple color temperatures on it. And if I switch over here and show you the exact listing here real quickly, um, we'll look at some of the uh, important things on here. So the first thing to note is this is for the United States only. Again, I'm sorry, this has been, this is going to be a real tough one to get packed and shipped right now with the things that are going on. So uh, shipping is still available. It will be $200 to get it packed and shipped to you wherever you are in the continental United States. It ends on 417, which is next Friday at 513 p.m., um, that is Central Standard Time, and pickup is available still. So you will be able to come pick it up, or I will probably just meet you at somewhere like either um, a grocery store or something like that if you'd like, and uh, be able, if you're local to Gallatin, Tennessee, then uh, that's actually in the middle of Nashville kind of area, north of Nashville. But uh, I did start this monitor bidding at $1.00 and it's up to 72 now. It's been on there for almost two days, so I just wanted to really uh, put this as low as possible, which is a dollar is pretty low, so uh, I'm sure that, you know, we should go through, though, and I want to show you exactly, at the even at the end of this, what's the major problems on this monitor. First off, if you look through the pictures, which we'll take a closer look at here, uh, the sides here did have a lot of dings and um, scuffs, which you can see that's a good one right there. There's another one in the corner 
over here that's a pretty good scuff. So there's paint scuffs on um, the shell, and that side of the shell's not as bad. And even if you look at, say, the front bezel, or you're going to have, you know, visible areas where the paint's chipped off on the sides of these bezels. I didn't repaint this. There's a lot of, like, scratching like that. Now, on the back, uh, I do need to show you this real quickly. This was not a part of the repair videos, but the exterior of the shell had some cracks in it in the corners here. And even some of the pieces cracked off up, up here. Uh, you can see where there's some larger vents than they normally would be. It's where pieces cracked. So the what I did was I used some really high quality epoxy and I repaired those cracks with the epoxy. So there won't be any problems with the cracks, but they are visibly there. There was some repair needed in each corner. So there's the other corner. It wasn't nearly as bad in this corner. But, you know, that plastic's almost 30 years old, and it definitely had gone through some stress. Here's a quick look at the back again. I went through a lot of this stuff in detail in those videos. You know, here's the things like you've got on the back color temperature, um, as well as the vertical hold. So there are some controls you can do for geometry back there, just not very much. Um, again, this one has been calibrated, but there you go. You got the, This one just has the analog RGB input with sync, and then it's got two line A's, which are BNC composite and S-video. Got a VTR and a digital RGB input, which are pretty much useless. So... Uh, here's another closer look at that other corner scratch. So, so, you know, if you wanted to get in here and paint it, you could. I thought it looks kind of cool cleaned up and still having the characteristics of the scratches on the stuff. But here's one of the scratches that wasn't very cool, and that is this screen buff scratch type. It's very light. Uh, this is with, like, a highly reflective light on it so I could get it amplified as much as possible. I'll show you a video clip reel here real quickly just so you can see. Um, what I'm talking about on here, we'll take a look at Mr. Bald Bull real quick, and um, I'll show you this this scuff or scratch. It's visible right here a little bit. So if it's, if you got a game plan, it's very hard to see unless you're like looking right at it. But here in a second, you'll be able to see a little bit better. But there's this little screen scratch on the screen. This tube does not have any type of a you know, protective lens or anything like that. It's just got the uh, glass on there. So that is there. You know, somebody did link me an interesting post um, about how to repair that. And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting, you know, to, to fix glass, but it was a lot of buffing and, you know, a lot of chemicals and things. So I don't know if I'll try that. I, I, I'm not going to try it on this one, but it's interesting to think that somebody probably knows how to buff out some of those scratches and things, and that would definitely be one of them that you could try, but I, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the next thing that is still uh, obvious with this, and I did go over this in that video, I recapped and recalibrated the monitor, but there is still some screen bow here in this corner. Slight bow remains even after adjustment and recapping, so I went over that in that adjustment video. But I also just needed to give you that information in case you're looking at this and you haven't seen that video. There is that with the screen. And the convergence was greatly improved on it, but there still was, you know, a little bit of beam convergence. Not really much, but, I mean, it's not like it's the it's going to be the super sharpest uh, CRT you're going to find because, again, it's almost 30 years old. But it does look great. And so uh, I'm just trying to give you as an honest and um, straightforward information on it as possible. So again, uh, if you you know if you want to know that's that's kind of a little bit more information about this monitor. Now, if you do have component and you want to get it into this monitor, you can always get some other kind of device that just uh, converts that component to an RGB signal, and that will e easily be put into this monitor. And so. Um, I've got, you know, a lot of other things going on, but I wanted to give this quick update to that monitor. So I'll put a link in the description and in the comments below 
on the exact listing for this monitor. And again, its shipping is available, and so is pickup. Um, it ends 417. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.